Hello everyone and welcome to our special place for our story, which this time takes place in the desert. I'm sorry you can't be here with us as we tell our story, but we haven't even got Mr Tiggs with us, but I've been given a picture of Mr Tiggs, here he is, asleep in the church on a chair over there. I know that the time will come when he can rejoin us in our special place, just as you will be able to rejoin us. Here. So our special place is ready, and here is the story. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Now we've got the desert back, because today's story takes place in the desert. And it's good to have a piece of the desert here in our special place to help us to tell the story. can't have all the desert. There wouldn't be room here for all the desert. You just have a part of the desert. Desert is a wild and wonderful place. It's very, very hot in the desert. There's no water. If people don't take water with them, they can die. At night it gets very, very cold. And people have to wrap up to keep themselves from getting very, very cold. And when the wind blows over the desert, its shape changes. The desert is never the same. Now our story today is about Moses and how he received the ten best ways to live. Now I know that you're quite a way away from this, so at a point in this story I'm going to stop and bring the camera closer so you can see what's happening in the story. And then when our story is being told, go back to the as we were and we can have our prayers and light our candle. The people of God were led through the waters to freedom and freedom meant they could go where they wanted to do they could go where they wanted they could do what they wanted if they wanted to go to bed they could go to bed if they wanted to get up they could get up freedom was very important to them and God loved them so much that he decided he would give them the ten best ways to live we sometimes call these ten best ways the Ten Commandments. As the people went through the desert, they followed a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But the people got fed up. They began to complain. Some of them even said they would rather go back to Egypt where they'd been slaves. They didn't have enough food to eat. They didn't have enough water to drink. Well, Moses asked God, and God provided them with food and provided them with water. And they went across the desert, led by Moses. And eventually, they came to a mountain. If I can make it out of our sand. A mountain called Sinai. And they looked up the mountain. It was very, very high. It was very, very high. And also, the top was covered in smoke. And there was flames and there was thunder and they were very, very frightened and only Moses was willing to go up the mountain to speak with God because God was on the mountain. And God spoke to Moses and God gave Moses the ten best ways to live written on tablets of stone. 
Unfortunately, he took a long time up the mountain. The people down below got very fed up. They got fed up with waiting. And they said, we will make ourselves a god, which we can see and which we can worship. And so they took all their gold, they melted it down, and they made a golden calf. And they danced around it and sang songs to it and worshipped it. Now when Moses came down the mountain eventually, he saw what they were doing and he was so cross, he threw the tablets of stone with the ten best ways on the ground and broke them. Well the next day Moses said, I'll go back up the mountain. Perhaps I can persuade God to forgive the people for what they've done. So Moses went back up the mountain. God forgave the people. And God gave Moses, again, the ten best ways to live on tablets of stone. And Moses came back down and he gave the, told the people all about the ten best ways to live. Preparation here ready. Now I'm going to stop and bring the camera closer so you can see the story. So let's look at the ten best ways to live. We can summarize the ten best ways because they break down into two parts. Love God. Love people and God loves you. They tell us how to love God, how to love people and that God loves us. And when they go together they make the shape of a heart. There are three commandments which tell us how to love God. There are six commandments which tell us how to love people. And there's one commandment which tells us how to love both God and people. So let's begin. Here's the first commandment. Don't worship any other gods but God alone. Number two. Don't make any idols and worship them. Number three. When you say the name of God, do it seriously with respect. Don't use the name of God as a swear word. And here's the fourth one, which is quite different, the one that bridges the two. Remember to keep the Sabbath as a holy day. And so we have number five. Honour your father and your mother. Don't kill. Don't break your marriage. Don't steal. Don't lie. And last of all, the tenth best way, don't want what other people have. Sometimes we call it coveting what they have. 
So here we have the ten best ways to live, the ten commandments. They tell us how to love God, how to love people, and that God loves us and wants us to live in harmony with him and with one another. I wonder what part of the story, which commandment you like the best. Hmm. Are there any commandments we could leave out? Well, there certainly wouldn't be any Ten Commandments then. And they're all very important. I wonder why it's so important to love God. Why it's so important to love people. I think it's time to light our candle and say our prayers. So I'm going to turn the camera off, move it, and then you'll be able to see the whole story and me for our candle lighting and our prayers. My word, don't I seem a long way away again? Now you can see why I brought the camera right up close so that you could see all the details of our story. So let's light our candle. Here it is on our table. We light our candle to remind us that Jesus is with us as we pray. The light of Christ is with us. We take our crosses. I hope that by now you've had a chance to make a cross. I've got the ones here and we'll use them again someday, I hope. As we hold our cross, we can say a prayer. We can thank God for the Ten Commandments. That God loves us so much, he wants us to live in harmony with each other and with him. Thank you, God you want us to love you and love people and live together in peace. Amen. I'll put the crosses down there and you can say a prayer yourself. doesn't matter if you say it out loud or Say it in your head. God can hear you. <coughs> there are all sorts of things we can pray about. And just pause for a moment while you can say your prayers. And then at the end we'll just say Amen. Amen. Now we're going to put out the candle, put out the light. Put out the light to remind us that Jesus just isn't here in our place or here with us as we meet. He is absolutely everywhere. The light of Christ, which was in one place at one time, can now be in all places at all times. I hope you enjoyed our story. The craft that goes with it is on the update and some songs as well. But now, a blessing. Heavenly Father, bless all our children, we pray. Keep them safe from harm. Watch over their mums and dads and their families. And be good to them. Amen.